Times champion. Yes, cool and composed so far. This was just a few moments ago. Stephen Hendrick finishing off business in frame four to go into the interval with a very healthy, very comfortable 4-0 lead. And albeit that uh, Zhang Ander has had a break of 48, we haven't actually seen anything as we've been in catch-up mode of any significance from the 18-year-old. So Zhang has had 15 minutes or so in his dressing room since all this happened to contemplate what's been going on in this match. And a very uncomfortable 15 minutes, I'm sure. It's Hendry, 4 0 up. And I wonder how much it intensifies the nerves, Steve, when you are in your debut and suddenly you haven't got a frame on the board yet. Well, I, I think uh, until you do get that first frame on the ball, you never really settle down into any match. Uh, and certainly it's even worse, I think, magnified at the Crucible Theatre. You're up against a guy that's very, very efficient amongst the balls. He's going to punish you, especially when he gets in front. Stephen Hendry looks pretty assured out there, so a tough uphill battle now for Anders Ang. Now, we do know that Stephen Hendry has, like many of you, had a couple of shock first-round defeats. He's, he knows from bitter experience what that feels like. So far, hasn't walked into any uh, mighty mouse trap, as I've been saying. Um, do you remember a couple of the, the real bad exits that, that Stephen had, most notably in 2000, when he was defending champion, John, he was beaten by Stuart Bingham? Yeah, um, I remember one with Nigel Bond, I think there was yeah, one there. I think years, yeah. he played, um, I mean, it's no disgrace to lose to Jimmy, but he lost to a first round. Jimmy was a qualifier. I think he lost to Jimmy one year as well, but uh, I say no disgrace in that one particularly, but it's one of those tournaments, as I say, you just want to be over the first round, you feel as if you're involved, you're actually in the tournament proper, and uh, it can be a nervous little time for him. It's now a nervous time for the Chinese boys, to be perfectly honest with you, because a good point Neil made in commentary there. If Stephen gets a good start, it's going to be very difficult for him to play in this match. It is indeed, and uh, I believe that both Zhang and Stephen have enjoyed, or well, probably one of them's enjoyed, a little break for 15 minutes. Stephen makes his way back to the table for another five frames of snooker. Zhang is due to break off here in frame five, so let's hand you straight back for live commentary now from Clive and Neil. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hazel. Good afternoon, everybody. Zhang's manager, Zhang Go Fung, who is the proprietor of the Grove in Romford, where Zhang practices, would have been offering words of comfort, reassurance and encouragement during the interval. But uh, it's Zhang himself, he's got to do it out on the table. There's lots of ways it can go out there, first time. You can just be nervous and play badly, or in Zhang's case, he just hasn't really played. He's, he's slightly frozen up a bit. Not that he's had an awful lot of chances, but in the ones that he has, he, he just hasn't started a break. Played one or two good balls and then missed straight away. went for the pop there and he didn't get past the pack of reds. There's a huge difference between playing here at the Crucible on the most famous snooker stage in the world and playing anywhere else, even at final qualifying. When he beat four opponents, including our own John Parrott, to get through. And to do that, he would have had to play, and did play, a lot better than he has here this afternoon. Beat Ricky Walden, 10-8 in the last round of qualifying, making back-to-back -back centuries from eight all. This afternoon, though, he just hasn't been able to get going. And the big factor in that is how well Hendry has played. Hendry's safety has been excellent. He's given Zhang few chances. And those that he 
has given him, he's made a mess of. Yeah, Stephen has done something that we don't always see him do. He's basically sat back, he's played the safety shots, played the percentages, and waited for what was there, which in the past we've seen him really go out for his long pots and go for his opportunities to get in, but he's waited and he's been rewarded so far. Players do, I believe, have to change their game slightly as they get older. There are some shots they go for, whatever age they are. Some shots they refuse, whatever age they are. But the marginal ones, those choices change. Yeah, I mean, the fact, the, the reason they do that is because as you get older, you, you miss more, so your percentages change. Stephen used to knock everything in at long range when he was a kid. Of that you can have no doubt. That last shot was typical of the sort of difficulty Zhang has so often found himself in. He took over a minute to play the shot. He had to think what to do. And then he was as careful as he could be to try and play his own shot, but still didn't play it as well as he might have done. Well, maybe Henry was playing with off-centre striking for this. He wouldn't normally miss it by that much. Well, he's not left much. Stephen looked at the table and realised there is well, something quite difficult to the left corner and to the left centre. have turned out. Henry's made a mistake and yet uh, it hasn't given Zhang a clear-cut opening. It just could be one red that pots up into the top left. And that one does pot. Not particularly close though unfortunately. So another chance for Zhang. Bomb. And this time it was straight forward. Seven. 